I saw a really cool, heartwarming post of your parents mm. holding your trophies uh, at Brackley. Um, is that really the first time they've uh, come and kind of like, been a part of it and held the trophies and, uh, and, and been there? For yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, they they come to a few races here here and there, but as you go into the factory, I guess it's not really something you would ordinarily do as a as a parent. So parents of work, uh, parents yeah, also, yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, they got the opportunity to come and, and had a great time and. And they got a tour of the factory, saw some of the trophies from this year, and you know they were such a huge part of my my journey as as a kid. And we we've sort of this has been a dream for all of us, all of my family, not just myself. So for them to get a bit of that success as well, you know, my success is their success, and, and vice versa. So it was pretty special. I mean, you're up one of the biggest teams in Formula One now. How, how often do you still pinch yourself and remember back to those karting days? I remember you telling me a story once about how you used to go around and pick up the tyres from mm. like other drivers when you were yeah. younger and yeah. work with your brother. So how often do you kind of realise, oh wow, I'm a Formula One driver? Probably not as much as I should, to be honest, because we live such a fast lifestyle. You're, you're from one race to the next. I've, I've sort of learned I don't look at a year in terms of weeks and days and months you look at it as races it's like right uh, japan's finished we got four days at home and then it's you know we're off to austin and then it's to mexico and then i start thinking to myself i don't even know what day of the week it is um but definitely when i look back at you know photographs even just from four four or five years ago when i was racing formula three and formula two it's been such a quick journey and you know the stars had to align to get in this position at a young age and then to start performing. Um, yeah, I guess pretty special. From the outside, you seem like a bit of a perfectionist. Uh, okay. So how would you rate this season? How do you think you've done? Because again, from the outside, it looks pretty impressive when you just look at your points tally compared to Lewis, Carlos and the Ferrari as well. Yeah, um, it's been, been a good season, but definitely not a perfect season. There's been a lot of missed opportunities you know I'd say Silverstone was a big missed opportunity uh, the last two races in Singapore, Singapore and Japan were not good enough really there's probably Zambor if we did things differently we could have fought for the victory or could have we could have got a victory but on the whole I'd probably say you know over 75% of the races we could not have achieved a better result than we did and you've got to take positives from that I don't think other than Max and Red Bull, I don't think there's probably any other driver or team who have maximised their results finish on so many occasions. And you talk about that victory, elusive so far, of course you came really close to it when you subbed in for Lewis in mm. Sakir. And, I mean, does, does that ever, does that bother you? Does it, is uh, it something which... You how do I... That was obviously my best chance in Formula One to win a race, that, that car W11 was you know, probably one of, if not the greatest Formula One car in history in terms of performance and results. Um, I feel like it probably would have been too easy if I just came in and, and won that race. You know, uh, I was still young at the time, it was last minute. And we had a pretty straightforward race, got into the lead at turn one, led 60 out of 80 laps, and then we had a puncture and wrong tyres fitted to the car, and it all kind of all went wrong. But I sit here now, if I was a one-time race winner or not, wouldn't have changed my life. You know, I'm here to win world championships and you obviously need to win races to win a world championship, but history, you can't dwell on the past. And one thing you have had this year is a chance to measure yourself against a seven-time world champion, a guy who's won more races than anybody else. How have you stacked up? Because we see the points, we see the results, but you know the actual data. You know where you're quick, where you're as good as him, where you're faster than him, maybe where you still need to make up some ground. So how, how do you, how, how, how's that been to see that? Uh, yeah, I mean, such an opportunity to be in that position alongside Lewis. Um, you always want to go against the best and, and prove yourself. And, you know, I still feel like I've got more, more to offer. It's been, been a strong season, but definitely I see how strong Lewis is, I guess. Uh, yeah, whenever he is ahead, it still you know it does frustrate me as as it would with with any driver. Um, but it's definitely going to make me a more all-rounded driver and, and a faster driver and, and greater driver for it. But I feel yeah, I feel uh, relatively happy with how we've sort of fared against one another. But definitely, I still feel like I need to take it to the next level. Where, where does that go? Where where do you need to improve? Where what are your weaknesses? 
I think in Formula One, it's always like a constant evolution. You might have a strong year, but you go to the next year, you have a different car, different tires, different engine, and you've got to be um, you got to be ready to adapt to, to these things. So I think that's that's the biggest thing. I think that's the most unique thing about Formula One. It's a different circuit, different conditions, different countries, week week in, week out, and you've just got to learn to sort of. Um, tap into that toolbox of experience whenever whenever you can. Just go back to a uh, very serious issue, but the Japanese Grand Prix with the tractor that was on mm. track. Um, obviously, it has GPDA, you're going to have something to say about it. How much have you, as a driver, collectively talked about it, and have you had any contact with the FIA up to this point about what happened? Yeah, I mean, we all spoke about it on, on Sunday night during the red flag um, interval. We were all talking about it, and we were all obviously very um, disappointed with how that unfolded. I think we, we always have a driver's briefing on Friday of every single event, so I guess that'll be our opportunity to hear from the FIA. I think that most of us have been in contact with Mohammed, um, obviously president of the FIA, and I think they everybody realises that was definitely not what should have happened or should ever happen, but you know it's always going to evolve and we always need to keep on making the sport safer. Not a lot more to say than that, really. So, I mean, you as drivers, do, do you have an idea of what you'd like to see change? Because there's some comments after the race and you know, everyone's emotions running high, but is it a case that like, if it's wet, just don't put a tractor out, you know, if, even if you're behind Yeah, the well, I mean, there's not really any scenario where I feel like having a tractor on track is, is really safe to do so. Um, if we crash into a bag of a tractor, okay, these cars are incredibly safe. We are going slower speeds. But I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is a Formula One car is meant to be driven in anger and at speed. These tyres are designed to be going around a corner at 200 miles an hour. Suddenly when you put it behind a safety car and you go in 40 miles an hour, you have no temperature in most tyres and it's like driving on ice. Uh, so um, counterintuitively, it's actually probably more dangerous driving at those slow speeds because every driver is working so hard to warm the tyres up, you have no grip. So it's almost more work under a safety car than when you're actually driving naturally like these cars and tires and drivers are designed to drive at. So, um, as I said, I don't really see any scenario where it's safe to have a, have a tractor on track. In terms of those lines of communication with the FIA, um, are they open? Is it what you want with the GPA? Is there still progress to be made there? Or? For sure there's a lot of progress that needs to be made, but I think it's, it's never going to be, uh, it's never going to end. You saw, you know, the crash with with uh, Joe in, in Silverstone and the roll hoop failure. You know, we believe the cars were strong enough in that regard and we learned they're not. And unfortunately, in this sport, you almost need you know, these uh, disaster, disastrous events to happen, to, to learn from. And I think in, in Japan, there was a lot to learn. You know, could we have brought the race forward? Is there so many standing puddles on uh, standing water on the circuits? Can we do a better job of getting rid of them, um, do we need to make better rain tyres, you know, do we need to allow the cars to drive around the track to, to drive us, I, I don't know, so um, yeah, never ending really.